Hello members, my name is Max Mitchell and I serve as the 2019-2020 PBL National President and I'm here interviewing Albert Amaya, an HR business partner out of Miami, to go over some resume insights in preparing for the PBL Career Connections Conference coming up October 24th through the 26th, as well as resume insights that can help you for your career along the way. So thank you for joining me, Albert. Yes, Max, thank you for having me. So first things first, we have to know who you are, right? So um, can you just give us a little bit of an introduction on who you are, your involvement in the organization, and where you are now? Sure, definitely. So um, as Max said, my name is Albert Amaya. I'm actually entering my 10th year as a member of FBLA PBL. Uh, during my time as a member, I served as the state and national officer, currently serving as the professional division state president for Florida FBLA PBL. Uh, as Max said, currently I'm an HR business partner, um, and in my role, my uh, job is to provide full cycle HR support, which includes organizational effectiveness, performance management, talent development, employee engagement, and a little bit about what we're actually going to be talking today, which is talent acquisition, aka known as recruiting. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that. And it's awesome to see how long you've been a part of this organization and how uh, I'm sure helpful it's been in, in your whole career process. So it's always exciting to see that. Um, Definitely. One thing that, you know, just to, to jump right in, what are some common mistakes you see? Uh, you know, you mentioned that you're in the talent acquisition field. Um, what are some common mistakes that you see across, you know, resumes and the recruiting process in general that you see candidates make all the time? Yeah, that's a great question, Max. And so uh, typically, you know, I, I do see a lot of common mistakes, but um, those that I see more often uh, include typos and grammatical errors. So your resume needs to be grammatically perfect. Um, resumes with grammatical errors tend to give a conclusion to any organization that you either just don't care about, you know, the job that you're applying for or sometimes that you can't write. So, uh, you know, my, my advice there is to make sure that your a uh, resume uh, is is error free, uh, typo free, and grammatic grammatical grammatically free. Um, another uh, mistake that I see often is incorrect contact information. Uh, there's been several times where I have reached out to some candidates and I get a um, failed delivery message via email because they typed their email address wrong on their resume. Um, and these, you know, resumes tend to be very strong and some candidates that are probably the most strong for the role that I'm uh, hiring for. So my advice there is to make sure that you are always double, triple checking your resume and running it by others uh, to make sure you have the correct uh, contact information. Another mistake that I see is going on for too long or cutting your resume short. Uh, there's really no rule for how long a resume should be. However, that doesn't mean that you should be sending out five-page resumes. Uh, in my opinion, a uh, one- to two-page resume is perfect. On the other hand, I have seen some people who have cut their resume short, meaning that they are removing a lot of uh, what I would call the meat of the resume just to make sure that, they're, that they meet the one-page standard. Um, so I would, you know, say don't create five page resumes, but at the same time, make sure that you're including all the necessary information um, to share with any recruiter or organization that you're applying for. And then um, my final uh, mistake that I want, you know, that I want to share that I see a lot is resumes with no relevancy to the job that individuals are applying for. Um, I would always make sure that you have some experience for what you're applying for or at least taking some courses or going to school for the role, role or field that you're applying for. You know, just to give you an example, I as an HR business partner, someone in the HR field, um, am not going to go to apply for a CFO role knowing that I have no experience in finance um, or accounting. Uh, so those are just a few of the common mistakes that I see uh, from time to time in my role as an HR business partner. Awesome. Thank you for sharing all that information. And, and we can go ahead and put this uh, to practice. I have some resumes for you to look at, and we'll start with the first one. Um, this is just a general resume, um, just a general professional resume that, that someone would submit. Uh, can you go, with, uh, go through with me? What are some good things about this resume? But we're probably going to spend a lot of time on what this resume could improve on. So um, <laughs> can, can, we, can you just share with me some things that stand out to you right away? Yes, absolutely. So just, you know, looking at it off the bat, Max, I'll tell you that I, I could probably uh, be here for a good, you know, a good while pointing out some things that are, are bad on this resume, but uh, on this resume, but just a few uh, to point out. 
immediately I'm not seeing um, I'm not seeing that the objective is necessarily what it should be. Uh, and I'm seeing some grammatical errors as well. So it says a want a good job to pay that pays a lot of money. And, you know, I, I, I do want to commend John Doe for being <laughs> transparent and honest and what his objective is. Uh, but a true objective should be um, where you state where your career, where your career goals are. Um, it's a, it's a desired outcome of what you are looking to achieve uh, by, you know, getting a specific role. Now, some will say that objectives on resumes are a bit outdated or not necessary, but personally, I have no preference. Um, you know, I would say include it if it helps, don't include it um, if it, you know, if you see that it doesn't help. Um, immediately off the bat, I also see that it's it's a little bit hard to read in the sense that it's, uh, I probably wouldn't organize it the way it's organized. Uh, personally, I would put education up front, um, followed by experience, and then um, interest. I'm not sure what they mean by tips, uh, but maybe I would, you know, rename this uh, section maybe skills and elaborate a little bit more on, on the skills that this individual is sharing um, that they have. Now, one of the things that I do like is when you look at their experience, it's very easy to pick out, you know, the time that they've been in the role, the actual role itself, and the company that they worked for. Um, that's something that as a recruiter, you know, our recruiting team spends no more than, I'm going to say, you know, 30 seconds looking at a resume uh, to, you know, to um, make sure the person has the skills that are needed for the role that they're hiring for. So for here directly, I see that this person has, you know, sales experience. And if I'm hiring for a sales role, then I'm definitely going to be looking directly at what their experience is. Um, so those are just a few of the things that I would say are good and bad about this resume. Sure. That, that's, those are some really important points. The, you know, the grammatical error within the objective, um, maybe kind of better utilizing the tip space and turning it into skills and things like that. So thank you for sharing yeah, that. Absolutely. Sure. Um, so the next resume hopefully is a little bit better. It's an academic resume, for example, for a student who hasn't really been in the workforce and maybe they're still in school. Um, so this is an example that I pulled from Florida State University's uh, Career Center. So could you go through me, go through with me, you know, again, the good parts, um, the not so good parts, and how can this resume be improved? Sure, absolutely. You know, starting off the bat, Max, you know, I do want to say that I, I found myself, you know, writing academic resumes because I didn't have the necessary job experience. And, and, you know, my advice for those who don't have the professional experience out in the workforce, but do have a really good academic background is don't be afraid. You know, there's a lot of things that um, that come out of, of you being involved um, or or or, um, or taking your academics seriously. So in this case, Max, you know, one of the things that I like is um, the organization of the resume. So as I mentioned before, you know, the way that I typically like to lay out um, my resume is by starting off with education. You know, straight off the bat, I see that this individual has a master's degree and a bachelor's degree, which is something that, you know, um, I like to see, especially in, in the field that they're applying for. So it looks like this person is um, looking for a role in accounting or, or tax, right? Um, I like that they are consistent with the amount of bullet points across the um, the resume. So this is just something you know that, that I tend to see that there's people who lay out their experience and will include ten bullet points for one role, but will only include one or two. For another rule, I, you know, my my uh, suggestion there is to make sure that you're consistent with the amount of bullet points that you're going to include for each role, and also make sure that you're elaborating and being specific with the things you've done in each role. Um, now, something that I do want to point out here is that I am seeing a lot of white space, you know, and for me, um, and in my and in my experience, I would always say to fill up uh, all the white space uh, as much as the, of the white space that you can, starting off with. Um, you know, up top at the header, uh, something that I'm seeing is that this person included their full address. And in my opinion, that's something that's not necessary nowadays. Uh, you know, most of the communication uh, with candidates are being done uh, via phone or via email. So um, I would suggest to remove your full address from, from your resume and just include a city and state. Um, and then you can probably put that in one line and that'll give you more, um, much more space to elaborate on everything else. 
Now, I'm seeing down there uh, where it says activities, this person was involved in the accounting society as a treasurer. Um, this is a great area to elaborate, you know, what you did as a treasurer. Uh, and the reason why I point out this area is because uh, I remember when I was involved in PBL, um, I would come across members who had a hard time, you know, trying to explain what they did um, in PBL. And there's a lot of things to elaborate. You know, the fact that you're competing in over 50 plus um, uh, competitive events, you're attending conferences nationwide, um, you know, uh, and competing against other schools uh, around the nation. You're attending workshops to better yourself. These are all things that, needs to, that need to be listed on, on, on your resume, especially if you're a PBL member. And truly, it doesn't matter if you're just a regular member or you could be national president, right? Um, but these are all things that should be included on your resume. You made a couple of really interesting points, Albert. I mean, number one, with something as simple as the bullet points, that's something I personally wouldn't even think about twice. But to you, it's something that pops out, the consistency between um, experiences and things like that, and making sure that you kind of provide some context for all uh, of your experiences on your resume. Um, Absolutely. Um, it goes back, Max, to, you know, how easy it is to read your resume. I'll tell you, recruiters aren't going to spend be spending a lot of time if your resume is hard to read. You know, in this case, this person bullet points are, are consistent. So, you know, I'm looking quickly straight through the resume and I see that this person does have some solid accounting experience and would be good for um, an accounting role in my organization. Awesome. And, and, and just the last point I want to touch on with this resume is that I think you made a great point about showcasing your campus involvement with, you know, PBL and, and what you've done. I mean, we do so much without even realizing it, whether that's um, chartering the chapter, recruiting members. I mean, all of those things help out in the professional world. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, and it's funny you bring up that point. I remember when I first interviewed for my role out of college, um, it was actually in, in a in a role in talent acquisition where I would be recruiting candidates. And I remember, um, you know, going back and talking about my PDL experience and the fact that, you know, I was out in my school recruiting uh for members to join our organization and I would share all the benefits and you know that was something that I was able to easily relate to you know something that I would be doing out in the workforce so definitely awesome so now the final resume that we're going to look at is is a resume more so for people who've been in the workforce for a little bit uh, who may be going back to college or who've been out of the work who've been out of college for a while um Obviously, there's a lot less white space uh, in this one. So can you just walk me through your thoughts on this resume, what's good about it, and what could be improved? Sure, sure. Um, I, I really like this resume, starting with the fact that, again, it's easy to read. Um, there's not a lot of information on there in the sense that, you know, um, it's not more than one page or, or two pages. And, and I'm going straight to, you know, what it is that the person um, is currently doing and what they're wanting to do, starting with the objective, right? So um, I consider this to be a solid objective, uh, something that I, I would use and I would recommend others to use uh, on their resumes. Um, as far as their education, I see that this person um, put their GPA, and that's something that I actually wanted to point out. You know, um, if your GPA is three point, in my opinion, if your G, if your GPA is three point and above and above, then I would put that on there. But if it's anything less than that, then I would take it off your resume. Um, I, I remember being in PBL and being asked a lot of questions about GPA, and that was my you know kind of my rule. Um, it, again, if your GPA is over three point oh, it's it, you know it's fair to go ahead and put on your resume. Um, now, looking down at this person's leadership experience, you know, uh, I was just talking about how it's important to, you know, to share um, and to elaborate a little bit of, of, on your extracurriculars while you're in school. And it looks like this person has has done that. Um, so overall, besides the the address, having the current address and top I would uh, I would remove those but other than that I think this is a solid resume and and something that you know um, you guys can use as a template as you create your resumes for this careers connection conference sure and, and I'll be sure to include that within the resources page on our PBL career connections uh, uh, resources page so thank you for pointing that out um, now that we've kind of discussed those three resumes a little bit I kind of want to move into some more question and answers 
Um, so what are some common misconceptions that people have regarding resumes? Because I know you kind of touched on this, but um, what do you hear people and, you know, what do you hear about resumes and you're like, that's just not true? Yeah, uh, that's, you know, uh, this is a good question, Max. Um, so the first misconception um, I want to point out is uh, those that say that resumes should include every job you've had. Um, and I would say that that's not true. Um, I would say that job that any job that you've been in less than three months should not be on your resume unless it's an internship or it's a seasonal role. Um, and the reason I say that is because if as a recruiter, if I'm starting to see that you've been in, in jobs for, you know, let's say two months here, one month here, three months there, I would say that, you know, you're someone who's quickly to jump from job to job. And most organizations nowadays are looking to invest in their employees and invest in employees that are going to be there, you know, for, for a while. Right. Uh, so so that's the one thing I would say. Um, the other thing I would say about that is. Um, I, you know, obviously depending on your experience, right? So if you're someone that's maybe three to four years out of college, you're probably going to want to put everything that you, uh, that you've done. Now, if you're someone that's been out of, uh, out in the workforce for 10 to 15 years, or maybe even more than that, um, then I would suggest going no, no more than 10 years. That's awesome. That's something that I've heard before, especially for those who, are returning to school or who have been out in the workforce for a while to kind of limit it to 10 years of, of relevant work experience. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Another one that I've heard, Max, is um, color on a resume. So I, I remember getting, or I still do, I still get a lot of questions around whether color on resumes is acceptable. And um, it really depends. I would say that um, Creative resumes with colors are, are are typically more for those candidates that are applying for creative slash marketing roles, right? So just to give you an example, um, I typically see colorful resumes when it comes to those applying for graphic designer type roles, right? Because they want to showcase their creative side and what they're able to do. But if you're applying for, you know, let's say accounting, finance, uh, general management, um, you know, even retail, I would stick to, you know, to very little color. Uh, you know, uh, just some examples that I would give is maybe using a navy blue for your name just to make it stand out or using a green to showcase a graph, right? Um, but that's as far as what I would do um, with color. Oh, that's an important tip because sometimes it's easy to just find a, a template that looks really nice, but then not realizing whether or not it's appropriate for the position. So thank you for sharing yeah. that. Absolutely. So what tips would you give to students for their resume and how would that trans how would that change for older students returning after a career? And I think we've already touched on this a little bit, but uh, are there other things that you think are important to distinguish between a student resume and a professional resume? Sure. Um, one of the things I would say, Max, is, you know, your resume can take you, um, you know, far. However, really, when it comes down to nailing, uh, you know, getting that job or, or, or doing well in the interview is, is how you come across, right, when you're in front of a recruiter or when you're, when you're in front of a hiring manager. So my tips are not so much about resume. It's more about what to do with your resume now that you have it perfected, right? And, um, you know, one of my tips is to be bold. Put yourself out there, but don't come off as desperate. You know, I, I have seen candidates that come off as desperate. Um, remember that you are a talent and that you are recruit that recruiting itself is a two way street. So while organizations are interviewing you, you need to do your job and interview the organization to make sure it's a right fit. Uh, because the last thing you want to do is, you know, be at a place where you're not happy. Uh, where you're working long hours just because you didn't, you know, research or ask the right questions during the interview process. Um, so that would be, you know, one of my tips. Um, don't be afraid to share what's important to you in an employer. I know that there's people who, who are very hesitant to ask questions about, you know, what's the culture like? You know, why why is this position open? Or, or what, you know, what is your ideal candidate? Don't be afraid to ask any of these questions. Um, hiring managers and recruiters, talent acquisition teams enjoy sharing about a company's culture. And that way, you know, you're not wasting time, but the organization isn't wasting time if the right culture is, um, isn't a fit. 
some really important points, Albert. Thank you for sharing that because it's really important that once you commit to a job that it's the right one for you. Um, Absolutely. Now, so obviously we're in a different age now where recruiting is almost entirely done online and you submit a resume and do the cover letter and that's it. So how would candidates stand out in the age of internet recruiting? What is your experience with this? Yeah, no, that, this is a great question. I'm glad you bring it up, Max, because, you know, nowadays recruiting goes beyond just the resume or the interview. Um, you know, so when it comes to Internet recruiting, my first thing that I would share to any member today is if you're not on LinkedIn, get on it today. Right. And it uh, and it goes beyond just creating a profile. It goes, you know, um, as far as being active, uh, you know, um, getting connected with other members across um, uh, across the organization, getting connected with, with other organizations, reading articles, posting about your experience. These are all things that, that can help your image, especially uh, nowadays where LinkedIn is used as a recruiting source, right? So there's many times where I've been reached out through LinkedIn about job opportunities, and, and, and I see it all the time. So that would be my, you know, first uh, advice when it comes to standing out um, in today's age of internet recruiting. The next thing is, um, I'm not sure if if you if you or or members have noticed, but a lot of a lot of companies nowadays are on social media. So they're on Instagram, they're on Facebook. You know, they're promoting their organization out there. And my only advice would be that if you're going to be following one of these. Um, you know, companies on Instagram or, or on any social media platform, um, just to make sure that you're being careful with what you post. You know, um, who knows if, if, you know, the person you're interviewing happens to be, you know, coworkers with the person who runs the social media page and they decide to say, okay, you know, let's look up this person just to see what, you know, uh, what the personality is like. Um, and, you know, you run into some pictures that aren't necessarily appropriate. I would just say to be on your A game at all times, you know, to share things that you would want to share with coworkers, not necessarily things that you'd be embarrassed of. Yeah, those are some really important tips because even I, for example, like if I'm on uh, Facebook or, or Twitter or something, some personal social media, I kind of can forget about how long lasting those things are and how um, it really speaks to the image of the person. And so thank you for sharing that. It's really important to remember. Sure. Definitely. So now that we kind of wrapped up all the big topics regarding resumes and recruiting, do you have any final advice for crafting the perfect resume? Because we want to make sure that, you know, when members are at the Career Connections Conference and they're handing their resumes to um, other students or, or hiring managers, we want to make sure that they stand out. So what are some final takeaways that you give for them? Sure. Um, you know, one of the things I would say, Max, is that, you know, members are going to hear from different people on what the perfect resume should be. And, you know, uh, my advice to to members um, out there wanting to craft that per- perfect resume is that, you know, it's going to be a lot of trial and error, right? So um, you may try a resume one way and you see that you may not be getting a lot of hits. Okay, so that means that it's time to change it, right? So I would say that your resume should always be evolving uh, with what's trending nowadays on what should be on a resume. So uh, being informed of what recruiters and talent acquisition teams and organizations are looking for is going to be important. Um, You know, and the other final piece of advice I would say as, you know, being, being a PBL, a former PBL member and being someone that, you know, I can honestly say that I am today because of uh, FBLA PBL is make sure that you're including everything you're doing in PBL. Um, just like I said earlier, you know, in my first interview for my position of college, I was asked about PBL and the fact that I was able to share what I did and how that was relevant to what I was doing or, or what I was going to be doing uh, in my real job, you know, that that was huge. And so, you know, don't be afraid to put everything that you're putting on there. Um, and like I said earlier, again, put yourself out there, um, network, uh, create connections, and just, you know, don't be afraid to show a little personality too, because I know there's some people that, you know, think interviews always have to be very, um, very uh, formal. Uh, sometimes, you know, showing... Person, that personality can go a long way and can even, you know, get you as far as being um, looked at over someone that's 
very skilled in a type of role that you're applying for. Those are some very awesome tips, Albert. So thank you for sharing all of that. And I, I just want to, again, thank you for uh, joining me and discussing the important resume insights in preparing for a PBL Career Connections Conference. And so, again, you know, you're, you're, you have so much experience as an HR business partner, as a former PBL national president, and as a state uh, professional division president. So again, thank you so much for coming on. And to our members, I really encourage you to take the opportunity of a lifetime to launch your career by joining us at PBL Career Connections, October 24th through the 26th. Um, so sign up because registration uh, spots are going by quickly. So uh, again, just to wrap up, Albert, thank you so much for joining me. And I hope uh, that our members can take away from this uh, just as much as I have. Yes, thank you, Max, for having me and good luck to all members. All right. Good luck, everyone.